Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah. This is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at a little bit of good news in terms of Super 8. First of all, welcome to what I am currently dubbing as uh, Analog Resurgence Week. Uh, so Monday to Friday of this week, actually, I'm going to put out one uh, kind of little video each day uh, about a little different topic here and there, some little interesting stuff. So you've definitely got that stuff to look forward to. And today I'm talking about a nice little news article that's really encouraging, especially if you're a big fan of Super 8 and maybe just film in general. Don't get your hopes up. This is not about the Kodak Super 8 camera, which I just, um, uh, just leave it. So there's a nice little website called super8.tv, which I will link to in the description. You can check it out and that's where this article comes from. They post some really interesting stuff dedicated entirely to Super 8 film and you should definitely check it out if you're looking for some really interesting little articles about that small fun little format that I love to feature on the channel. And this article concerns the film sales numbers for Super 8 from last year and it's pretty encouraging actually if you kind of take a look at it and think about it overall. So this is based off of an announcement that Kodak Japan made on their Facebook on March 5th of 2020 which is just a few weeks ago now and it states that worldwide sales of Super 8 films in 2019 were the best since 2011. 2011 of course and 2012 being Kodak's kind of darker period of time where for motion picture stuff at least they had announced bankruptcy. So to see things bounce back from that, especially Super 8 because it's so small and so niche is really encouraging in terms of knowing that this stuff is going to be around for quite some time. So worldwide sales of Super 8 films in 2019 were the best since 2011 with four consecutive years of growth and 35% overall increase. And the article actually contains the top 10 countries where Kodak Super 8 film is sold most often. My first inclination actually to do this kind of as a David Letterman top 10 list, but I think I'll withhold on that until I inevitably get a late night talk show. So the top 10 countries where Kodak Super 8 film was sold the most in 2019 starts with number one being the USA, which I mean is probably not really surprising. Second place goes to England, third place goes to Germany, fourth place goes to Australia, fifth place goes to Canada, which is great, a little bit of representation there, of course being in Canada myself, that's really exciting, and also we have a lab in Canada that processes Super 8 film. Niagara Custom Lab here in Toronto, you can check out the website for that down below if you're in Canada, if you're close to Canada, if you've got film that you want to send to Canada to be developed and transferred, etc, etc. Number six is France, number seven is Japan, number eight is Spain, number nine is the Netherlands, and number 10 is Finland. So, I mean, that's like a pretty widespread number of countries that are still using Super 8 and are placing in terms of how much they are selling for Super 8. And then broken down by percentage of film bought during 2019, here are the numbers for that as well. Now the Super 8 stocks are color negative, black and white reversal, and color reversal as well. Color reversal ectochrome is pretty recent. It was reintroduced within the past two years, so only people are kind of maybe starting to discover that or find its uses and it is more expensive so it's probably gonna be the stuff that sells the least. Number one with 30% of sales is Vision 350D. Number two is 500T with 22% of sales. Uh, number three with approximately 20% of sales is Vision 3 200T. And those are all color negative film stocks which makes the most sense because they're the most flexible easiest to expose for. Color negative is really flexible and just like easier to kind of use and shoot with, transfer and then digitally edit and share around online. And then Tri-X black and white reversal film, which is black and white reversal, which you can project, makes up about 15% of sales. And then in the last place is Ektachrome 100D color reversal film with only about 14% of the sales in 2019. Again, Ektachrome being more recent and it being more expensive and really tailored for people to project it as well. You know, it's still like a really nice looking film and a great option to have for a color film to be able to project for Super 8. So I mean, that is super encouraging because uh, like Super 8 definitely needs to find like a bit of a foothold in an audience in order for it to continue to survive. So seeing the numbers and knowing that there has been an increase since 2011 and like good numbers behind it is encouraging because I mean, for all the people who are like, Super 8 is a dumb format, Super 8 is not 
useful today. Super 8 had its place and no longer is relevant at all. I mean, respectfully, all of you guys can just go because I mean, you know, in terms of the numbers at least uh, and kind of public interest and definitely the interest I've seen on the channel, Super 8 has a bit of a future. So I will link to that article and the, the website that it's on and you can check that out. There's uh, there's some really interesting little fun articles over there. So um, anybody out there who's interested in shooting Super 8 know that it exists. It's probably going to continue to exist. Let me know about what your experience with Super 8 is, if you've shot on it before, if you want to shoot on it on the future, or like what your favorite stocks are. And of course, like and comment and subscribe to the channel and the videos and everything as I post them because the, you know that helps with everything. There is a link in the description to the Analog Resurgence Patreon. There's also a information in the description for the Analog Resurgence P.O. Box. If you have some interesting stuff to send me or like a postcard or something interesting. A recent bit of mail was this uh, really nicely put together zine by Holly Ferris and I will throw a link to her like Instagram and website and information down in the description as well. She sent this along and this is all long exposure night photography photos shot on a medium format Mamiya RB67 camera that has uh, been loaded with Portra 800 film. This stuff, there's some really nice looking stuff in here and also, I mean, you know, there's usually no better way to get inspired for yourself for using film and taking photos and doing all this stuff than actually, you know, sitting down and looking at other people's works and kind of finding other stuff that you really like and that inspires you to, you know, hopefully load up some cameras and, and do a little bit of your own work as well. So, of course, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon.